Okay, so it looks like we're streaming. Um, today is just going to be, I've got the Raspberry Pi and I need an enclosure for it because my dad does not have a complicated arrangement that I've got on mine where I've got sort of everything hanging out in a box on the side. I haven't actually implemented this yet, but this is sort of the test structure that's going to be the inspiration for what we're working on. Um, I already have a model of a Pi that I got off GrabCAD or something. I don't know. One of those places that you get uh, free CAD. Um, if somebody cares, I'll actually go down and put that information in the description, but I got this probably a couple of months ago, so I'd be hard-pressed to find it again. Um, really, the important thing that we care about are these is this whole pattern here. So that'll come up eventually. Right now, I think all we really need to know is this thing is 56 millimeters wide and 85 millimeters tall. You could probably find mechanical drawings as well, but that's effort. You know, why put effort in? Oh, messages. Who's sending me messages? Nobody sent me messages. It's just my phone blinking for no reason. All right, let's go. Um, millimeter gram seconds. For some reason, we have to use millimeters and we can't use meters. I think it's just because nobody wants to write 0. 0.000012 when they're specifying a chamfer or something. So I already have kind of in my head um, how I want to do this. We'll just make a quick uh, sort of base structure here. Let's say 80. So let's let's have 80 millimeters on the inside. 80 millimeters there. I've been having walls about five millimeters thickness roughly. And then 40, we are going to do come and look at the the structure. This T slot is 40 millimeters wide. And that's that's true for basically every Creality machine, is they've got a 40 millimeter wide extrusion on the sides. So let's come back here. And then the way I'm going to center this on the origin, favorite technique far and away, is to draw a line corner to corner and then use the midpoint of that. It makes for really secure, relatively speaking, models that don't really move around a lot. We'll make that, I think it was 85 millimeters long, so let's go with like 100 millimeters tall. That should be enough room. Then, I guess. I should clarify, my sort of design objective is have it sort of mimic this structure, which I can isolate here, actually, so it's a little easier to see. Isolate. I really want to have this sort of interior tab structure for supports, as well as the backing plate with mounting bosses and hexagonal holes in the backside to hold not captive nuts, but more than not captive. So we're going to do a quick extruded boss. I actually should make sure that that's on the right plane. It is. Top plane's in the right spot. Origin's where I want it. So we'll come down. Oh, hang on. My music stopped. As soon as I looked at it again, it kept going. So I guess I have to move this window somewhere else. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. For people who are watching on a platform that can't see live chat, my dad just said he was going to log in on all of his devices so that I can have all of, I don't know, three or four viewers. All right. So I'm going to pick this. This is kind of actually, so this is an important thing to note. Um, picking top plane versus picking the face that you're drawing on, it can change sort of how the features play out down the road if you ever want to modify which direction this is going. Like, if we... Uh, well, let's... I'm exiting the schedule, delete it. Um, hmm. you know, I'm just... I'm going to do it from the top plane instead. It's a little bit safer. You depend on earlier features that tend to not break quite as much. What I'm going to do, instead of doing going from the face, I'm going to just convert the entities. And this lets me uh, give 
gives me a little bit more control over uh, where my relations come from for, for earlier entities. I think what I want to do is I want to do another tombstone over tombstone tombstone. <laughs> I need another tombstone over here, so we'll just make that kind of like that. Then do a quick extend. Get rid of all that extra craft. Make these two as big as I want them to be. This will have to be 20 mils across. And make that tangent and tangent. And more tangent. Just gotta keep adding tangents until everything fits together. Aha, I see. That one is not tangent there. And now everything's black, so you know it's fully defined. Exit sketch. Do a quick extrude. And then five mil. Um, I think I'm the other viewer. I don't know. Uh, I don't remember who else I advertised this to. I think I put up a post on Reddit, but it looks like... Uh... Oh, check that out. I've got an upvote, so maybe there's... Hello, other random Redditor who saw my post on our functional print. So we're going to extrude that up, and that'll give us our two mounting bosses. I'm going to... You know what I could do? I could be a cool kid. And I could say... I'm gonna... Yeah, actually, this is going to be cool. I'm going to do this instead. So... If I extend this arc out here, that'll bring that over and, and capture that. Make those two line up. Tangent. And I'm going to get rid of this stuff over here. And then that'll give me a nice little notch down in here that I can bring wires up through. I'll show that on the, on the final model. It'll make more sense eventually, I promise. Let's do a quick hole wizard. For some M4 clearance holes. Yes, reset the sizing values. Really, you should make it do that by default, just so you don't get really weird hole dimensions, but I don't know. It's up to you. So, screw, screw clearances, M4. I like to use normal, just because it tends to work nicely with most uh, 3D printing processes. And we'll drop those in there. That looks good. And I realize I forgot to add my control sketch. So here's one of my favorite techniques for doing big hole patterns and things is, uh, if you know your hole patterns are rectangular, draw a rectangle, then just click on all your corners. Then you don't have to do stuff like aligning horizontal and vertical between, uh, <laughs> I am 100% wizard. Um, you don't have to do weird things like aligning your holes with each other and all sorts of linear pattern things. You could actually do it with a linear pattern if that was what you cared about, but, um, oh, hang on, that's from the wrong model. Um, what I'm gonna do is I can measure from this hole to this hole, and the hole measurement tool will tell me that is, oh, it's, you can see how it's going to the corners. I have it set to maximum distance right now. If I go to center distance, I get nice round 58 and 49. So we're gonna come up, come back over here. Let's say 49. Come over here. It's the half wizard. Uh, that would be probably difficult. It's maybe possible. I don't know. I'm gonna be kind of lazy. It, you can pick midpoints of of sketch lines and then use them. So I'm picking the midpoint of this line down here and the midpoint of this line up here. And then when I make it vertical, this will align this to be in the middle of my free space. Um, that's just the way that I want that to be. There's no real reason why you have to have it anywhere in that volume, but um, it's nice. We'll go 50 millimeters seems okay. So now that I have that planning and control sketch, I can do a whole wizard. Um, and Three keeps not continuing to play my music, which is quite frustrating. I guess that's fine, actually. I don't really need to watch the other stuff, but um, 
No, you know what? I'm gonna go get other. I'm gonna go get good music. That's what we're doing now. Good music time. Look at all this music I can't play. Um, let's do library playlists. There's this one band that hasn't. I don't think he's ever had copyright on his songs, but Seth Chasing Kara. Some of my favorite modeling music. Really choice. Okay, so. We're going to go on this face. And we're going to pick just one of the random hole locations I've got. I like to do up to next for my end condition because it's a little, little more controlled for how much... Uh, a little more controlled for where the hole ends. You don't get weird cutout patterns like a half a mile away on your part. That's very um, friendly, I think. So we'll call that good. I'll do a quick extruded boss from this plane. Convert the edge created by the hole. And then I'm just gonna offset it. And then I won't add dimensions, which gives me a really nice way to have a hole concentric with my existing hole that I can make as big as I like. So I think six millimeters is probably pretty reasonable. And then I'll tell that to be I'll just call it six millimeters for now. It doesn't really matter yet. Um, it will matter later on. Then we come to the back side and we use control two for that, which is just a way of manipulating your view. So control one is front, two is back, three is left, four is right, five is top, and six is bottom. Seven's a nice isometric view, which is a good press one keystroke and you have a nice view of your part if you modeled it in a nice orientation. Otherwise it could really could really throw you off. So we'll do our whole... Actually, no, this is an extruded cut, so... Uh, this is the part that I always have to look up. Uh, whoops. Infinite nut dimensions. Five and a half across flats, and... 2.4 thickness. So this will be... I like to go... I'll just do nominal. Nominal's fine. Or actually a little bit over nominal because you get a little bit of um, of sort of fill-in on the corners and that tends to be nice. Oh, hang on, that's 2.6, not 5.6. <laughs> and then just to make the sketch happy, you have to pick, whoops, pick an edge and make it vertical so that it has some idea where uh, what angle it wants to be at. So now, favorite trick in the book instead of doing a cut into the surface, we offset into the surface or into the surface by the thickness of the nut, reverse the direction to do up to next, and then draft outward by a couple of degrees. And that creates a really nice um, socket that the nut will just sort of suck down into when you when you tighten the fastener. And I think that's everything. So I'm gonna see. Let's come back out here. Mm, I think I prefer to actually do this before I add those. So we'll do a sketch-driven pattern. Pick your sketch first, and then your feature. And looks like it didn't get our hole down at the bottom, so I'll have to add... Let's see. Have to come back here and pick the clearance hole as well. A little annoying, but not super bad. And now we've got all of our uh, all of our bosses. So I could drop this into a into an assembly just to show. Actually, there's there's no real reason not to do that. Let's do that real quick. Um, make assembly from parts. Save and insert. Okay, gotta go find the right project file. Twelve Raspberry Pi. Here we go. Raspberry Pi enclosure. This is gonna be just enclosure. That's all part which is fine. And then it'll ask us what kind of assembly we want to make, and I want to do milligrams, or millimeter grams. Yeah, it's far and away my favorite way that, that I have for making um, captive nuts now. I see a lot of people use uh, design for square nuts for M3 and M4, just because it's a little easier to design for, and people don't like making hexagonal holes, but you can slide a hexagonal nut into a, into a rectangular hole sideways as well, so it doesn't doesn't really make a lot of sense. 
do a quick float on this. By default, it will uh, fix your part in wherever it is in space. But as you can tell by the fact that my part just went off to nowhere, didn't actually put it at the origin. So now the part is fixed at the origin. Don't have to worry about that. Pop the pie in. Grab one of these holes. And tell them to be concentric with me. By default, it will pick concentric because it detects two. Um, it picks. T it sees two cylindrical faces, so it just says, "Oh, you have two cylindrical faces. Clearly, you want these to be concentric." There's a couple of situations where that's not the case, but you probably shouldn't be modeling like that anyway. <laughs> so we'll let it create that mate, and by default, it opens up another opportunity for me to pick two mate surfaces. So two more cylindricals. And then I'll come back here and pick this back face and line it up there. So now we can see we've got a pretty, pretty solid little, uh, little assembly going. Looks nice. Um, this one's going to be Ethernet powered, so Ethernet port coming out of the top. A little bit weird, but I, honestly, that's how I'm going to have ports coming out of my enclosures from now on. Is have your ports coming out on the sides and not don't try and do anything clever to make them come out in potentially nicer locations. It's just, it's never worth the effort. Um, I think we can shrink this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is come in here. I guess I gotta look at the sketch. Say like 25. How's that look over here? That's a lot better. It's a lot tighter, I think. And I can probably shrink these down a little bit, make them only like four millimeters thick. This whole guy can probably get 10 millimeters shorter. No, it can't because that's going to interfere down there. So we have to stick with 100. But it probably can get a little shorter. So let's try 70. I think that's probably about as sort of compact as you can get that. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to be able to put a screw in that hole. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to bring this back up to like 10 millimeters. So it'll be sticking out a lot at the top. But there will be lots of space down here to sort of get your routing figured out. And these screws aren't going to be... What's the minimum distance here? Minimum distance is 24 millimeters. You're just simply never going to have a faster that needs to be 24 millimeters long. Because if you go and look at... Uh, do I not have the assembly up anymore? Uh, top level, where is it? Here we go, top level. The... I'm gonna exit the isolate, look at the part again, or look at the whole assembly. So if we look at the T-slot here, we've got our cross-section. The total depth of this slot is... Uh, 6.38 millimeters. So, if we come back here, and we say, okay, this distance here is... Ask the measurement tool if I can hit the right key. Five millimeters. You're never going to need a fastener with more than 12 millimeters threaded, and with 24 millimeters in there, you're just always going to have enough space. It's totally fine. Maybe you could make a case for being worried about exposing the back here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Freedom units, one inch. Um, you know what? I don't think it's really a crime to have this be a little bit longer, so I'm going to make this guy 115 and go back to my control sketch and say make this 25 and then we get the clearance on the nut and it's totally shielded and it looks nice so I'm a fan of that so now we can start doing billets uh, okay let's do Two millimeters everywhere interior here. Make all those nice and round. I'm gonna have to come back here and cut that out later, but I'll show how to. It's a fun trick for that. Well, not a super fun trick, but just my favorite technique. Let's do a quick chamfer up top here. 20 mils. Yeah, I think it is it better to have it just 
cover everything. Like that's an extra 20 millimeters by five millimeters or by like whatever this the length of that backside is. It's not a lot of extra filament and it's it's a good insurance thing. So that fillet looks good. I wonder what happens. I'm, so I'm gonna click on the round corners and that's gonna make that it's going to make these fillets round those corners nicely. And I'm really curious what happens if I then ask it to chamfer this. My guess is it'll just not do anything. Oh, one sec. Uh, tangent propagation. Yeah, it just totally nips that off. That's weird. That's bizarre. Actually, I don't want to enable tangent propagation here because I don't want it to go up that edge. So we're going to come back to fill it and disable round corners. So that way, when I come down here to chamfer, I get a nice cutout, just exactly what I want and nothing less. Whoops. <laughs> and then nothing more if I'm really done. <laughs> Can't actually select all my relevant faces. Okay, that looks good. Um... We're gonna add chamfers on the outside back here. Oop, one more. One more guy up here. And that's kind of been the exterior aesthetic I've been going for, is as much sort of exterior angulariness to make it nice. And that all looks good. And I realized I made a mistake. <laughs> I forgot to do my little cutout here, so I'll do that right now. Uh, extrude cut. I'm going to do it from the outside, I think. Um, so I want sort of a tombstone... Tombstone? can't speak English, apparently. I want a little tombstone cut out. And I want it to be... I want the center line. That doesn't look like the center line. There we go. That's... I want the midpoint of that, which is going to be the midpoint of my cutout, to be 10 millimeters off to the side. And I want it to be... Let's go with 8 millimeters wide for now. And we'll make it... I don't know. It's kind of convenient that it's already 10 millimeters tall. And then... Up to next. Which will make a nice little cutout. Right there. And we'll take a quick look at how that pops up on all the... Uh, I'll fill it some chamfers. Can I make that play nice? Yes, I can. That looks pretty reasonable. I don't think anyone would be unhappy with that. I'm certainly not. And that leaves a nice little entryway for wires to come. I mean, they could stay down in the um, in the trough, so to speak, but giving them a little more room to come up is kind of advantageous, I would think. It could make it a little harder to print if you're going to print on this side, which I intend to, but honestly, at this point, I have my support structures pretty tuned, so I think it's fine. Okay. What else have we got? I don't really think there is... We look at everything in context. We've got our mounting pads, which are very oversized. What is going on here? Chamfer parameters, symmetric, two mils. Hmm. That's really weird. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's just deselect all those edges and then... That looks reasonable. That looks reasonable. That looks fine. Yeah, okay. I guess the chamfer feature is just bugged to high heaven, which really doesn't surprise me. <laughs> it's not one of the more stable features in terms of... Uh... Okay. So, I've got the assembly here. I'm going to save this as... Uh, in... Or, no. I'm already in here, right? Uh, Raspberry Pi... Enclosure. 
Well, I'll call it enclosure with pie. Everything's better with pie. So I only have my CR-10S, but broadly speaking, most um, <laughs> broadly speaking, most Creality printers. I think I mentioned this earlier. Have this uh, minimum one by two uh, cross section. So I'm going to isolate to. Let's see if I can isolate to this guy. Now I don't know if it's also going to let me insert components. I think as soon as I click, no, it's, it's still there. Awesome. Okay. So it is now just showing me with the T-slot. So what I did there was just tell it, make those two faces um, connect with each other, but I'm going to flip it around so that the normals match and that way everything kind of lines up where I want it to be. We'll pick this outer face out here. That should, everything should slide into place. So that's what it looks like roughly in context. Um, if I come out of isolate, then it's going to get a lot more chaotic in the background, but you can kind of see what this is going for on the printer. Um, I think if it were in this, if it were going to be on this printer as is, I would probably do an extra cutout under here. That's what I'm doing with my electrical enclosures um, for my modifications as I'm having a cutouts in the bottom of, of the boxes for wiring to go through. But since this one is only receiving wires from the back of the printer on my dad's printer, that's just how it's going to be. It doesn't really need anything more complicated than that. Um, and more complicated means usually longer print times, even with cutouts and things like that, because you get more surface area, which means more walls, which means longer print times. Uh, I don't think there's really anything else that I'm missing. Uh, I've got all of my important spaces kind of blocked out. I've got got all my mounting holes. Those are all fitting. Oh, there is one thing I'm missing. I need clearances for washers on those. Not um, places to attach the USB and Ethernet cables for control. You mean something to zip tie them to? I assume that's what you're asking about, but I'm not. Since I'm not 100% sure, I figured I'd clarify. In the meantime, I'm going to do a quick extruded cut for washer clearance. Um, uh, da, 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 da. M3 washer dimensions. Outside diameter M3 is... Or no, these are M4 holes, so these need to be 9 millimeters. So I'm going to go on this surface. My two circles. Offset. Don't add dimensions. Whoops. Okay, I guess it wants me to convert them first. Cover to control the other wires. Uh, let me finish this and then I'll try and set down what you want me to do. Because I'm not sure. Um, okay. I'm just going to have those be blind up a little bit. I, if I do up to next, sometimes it has a habit of cutting those off. Okay, the zip tie too. Uh... Yeah, actually, you know what? Let's let's do a lid. Um, let's cut this guy down to like 10 mils. Hmm. I wasn't planning on doing this with a lid. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Um, so my dad's... I guess to clarify, my dad has asked me he wants a cover for this as well, which I haven't thought that far ahead. <laughs> I think I have some spare I can fasten to these, but I don't think I have 40 millimeter M3s on hand. Hmm. I might do this. Oh, I got plenty of time left in this playlist. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I definitely know what I want the shape to look like. I just don't know how I want to fix it. Hmm. Hmm. 
Because I did this with a hinge on mine. I wasn't playing complexity. Um, okay, so let's let's name everything first. So we got the main 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 body. Make a finger pattern. I think I. I think I know what you're talking about with the side vertices. You've lost me. <laughs> I'm. Let me. Okay, electronics control sketch. Answer clearance hole. That's fine. Uh, this is the M3 standoff boss. Actually, extrude. Nut cut, and then mounting boss pattern. And we've got the mounting tabs, extrude, four clearance hole cut, that's fine. Little tabs that insert in the first part. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's doable. I just, oh. I could. Ooh. Now you've got me thinking, and that means silly things are going to happen. <laughs> um, call this the wire wire entry cut. Uh, major chamfer A. We'll call it the uh, main chamfer A. And then main fillet A. Main chamfer B, and then this is the mounting tab washer clearance, and billets and chamfers. Wire entry cut is kind of its own thing. Tab features, mounting boss pattern stuff okay little tabs that insert into the part so I have to suss out what I want that to look like hmm this is gonna get real weird oops I want to go normal to this plane Extruded cut. This is going to look like nonsense because I'm coming up with this on the fly for a little while, but uh, trust me, it'll look really cool. <laughs> Oops, drew an extra line there. Make these guys symmetrical. Make this about probably 70 degrees. And make the total depth. Let's do like six for right, for right now. Make the overall height. Uh, ten. What's it complaining about now? Oh, it doesn't have guaranteed position. Okay. So now we'll do a quick linear pattern. Two instances in each direction. I don't want dimensions anywhere. I want these ones, say 35 mils up from the bottom. These guys, 35 mils down. Then I think I can just do a through all in one direction. We'll get some nice cutouts that I can then exploit. Okay. 
This is going to get real weird. Street of Boss. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to get rid of this big old... This guy over here. Whoops. That deleted all the other things. So I have to deselect that chamfer there before I get rid of this other chamfer. So it doesn't wipe my other feature because it's no longer the... Because it's a dependent. Which can be kind of frustrating sometimes. Oh, this is going to look just cool as heck. Really glad somebody prodded me into doing this because it's going to look really cool. <laughs> ah, hang on. Created some new ch edges that don't get champered. Fix those. Yeah, no, it's going to look... I'm actually super stoked about how cool this is going to look. <laughs> so let's do an extruded boss from the top plane. We're going to... Oh, hang on. Wait, we're after the chamfers right now, and we don't want to be. Let's do extruded boss like before from the top plane. We're going to come... We're just going to make a quick, simple, simple line drawing. And then making a do, I think, a thin extrude would be... Nope, don't close it. Uh, five millimeter, one direction thickness. Blind up to surface. I don't want blind, I want up to surface, so I'll come up here. And then, whoops, I have it set to merge. Do not merge results. And then we're going to uh, move copy bodies on this guy. And we're not gonna move it at all. It's just gonna stay exactly where it is. And then do a combine with a subtract using a main body, using our body out here, and then subtract the body we just copied. Now, if we come back to this base body and say change transparency, we have these sick little tabs that will lock themselves into place in there. And that is sick as heck. And I'm really glad somebody asked me to do it. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna do. Oops. What's my phone think I'm saying? Who knows? Um. I am more worried about there not being enough material on these on the tabs on this body then I am worried about there not being enough material in the cutouts of this body. So what I'm gonna do is hide this guy for a bit and we're gonna change transparency. So he's not transparent anymore. And we'll do a quick move face. Whoops, hang on. Offset, I only want 0.2 millimeters. We have to flip direction because the, by default it moves the face to, uh, in the direction of its normal rather than away from it, but I wanna move away from the normal in this case. So we just gotta pick a whole bunch of faces here. Whoops. Hang on, what did I pick? Ctrl Z. Hang on, clear selections, okay. Some screws applied to the slots. Um, I don't think you will actually. Cavity feature? Is that, a, what, what's cavity do? Oh, I see. That's interesting. I think that's more for molding stuff. Um, I've had very good luck uh, with just slightly, slightly offset faces. So I'm going to go internal of feature. There we go. Pick only the edges I care about, please. Awesome. And widen. Yes. So now we've got... Um, we show our body up again. We'll have clearances in there. And everything will just come out nice and clean. Which is exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, 0.2 millimeters is what I've been doing for, I don't know, a couple of months now. And it's worked surprisingly well, actually. Would not have, would, would not have suspected, uh, just like a, a standard 0.2 millimeter between parts that need to sort of press together would never have expected it to work as well as it does but uh 
I think I kind of like the look of these hanging out here. But I do need a couple more fillets on the inside. So we're going to hide this combine again and add a second. So a nice tiny clearance fillet in here. Quick shout out, Clay Brother. Excellent, excellent song. I'll make those like 0.8, I guess. Eh, 1.2. Let's make them pretty big. We'll call that main fillet B. And I have our, I have all the chamfer features I want on the outside of this guy. Yeah, sorry, I keep making that mistake. The question I was answering about um, 0.2 millimeters was clearances for um, for these tabs between the exterior, or between the mounted body and the lid body. So, whoops. Music's a little loud in my headset. Um, mail fillet. I can't spell. <laughs> Main fillet. So now we're going to tackle... Let's start with a, a... No, Champer. This is me not being able to make a decision about what kind of feature I want to add. And I like to do the, the distance distance style Champer instead of angle distance because it, uh, just still have no control for cables. That is coming. I forgot about it, but it is coming. I'll add... Um, I have an idea. It, it's coming. Those look pretty good. I'm gonna hide the hide the main body and add specifically what I want extra are. Oh hey. No, oh, no, I didn't add those. Okay. Uh, I added a chamfer. Oops. Draw some fillets in here. Because I'm a little worried about these guys breaking off. We'd say those are 0.8 millimeter radius. good to me. Uh, and then if we come back and look at the closure, I'm going to do a quick cross section here. The top plane, we'll slide it up to in the middle of one of these connections. And that gives us a nice sort of diamond face to be clamped between. I think it'll work really well. Uh, okay, so now I need to go back and do... I think the last thing I'm missing is really the... Um, the cable control features. Yeah, I, I like these kind of unorthodox, how, do you, how are you going to fit this together kind of deals, because they, they tend to make more interesting the finished parts when you print them out. Uh, I'm a little wondering, I'm wondering if I should maybe take 0.2 millimeters off that interface. You know what, I'm going to do it. Let's edit the feature. We'll hide this. Hide that body. And... Now when I come back... And show this body again. Do a quick slice. So we still meet up, everything meets up just fine, and then when we slide down a little bit, there's a little bit of clearance here, and that will that in my experience tends to make this these two surfaces come together a little more nicely. Um, it's not foolproof of course, but it's a lot better than nothing. And that fillet in there might just get a lot bigger. Keep edge, keep surface, default, keep edge, I don't know. Probably just gray. Oh, I think the one loaded on my dad's printer, and that's the one it's gonna get printed on, it currently has white print or white filament in it right now. Um, but usually, I mean, I'm not a very color conscious person. I'm quite happy to have my parts be a very dull gray to sort of blend in with everything in the background. And then if I have a part that I really want to stand out, then it'll get maybe orange or something, but um, I kind of like the industrial, keep it flat and simple. Uh, let's see, so this, that filament is going to have to be just 
its own deal. And then we're going to have to add another fillet down here to play nice with these guys. Uh, two mils. And I'm now realizing I really need offset faces down here too. So this offset face feature is going to keep picking up more and more. Uh, more and more extra duties. Yeah, it'll get printed on yours. Um, to clarify, my dad just told me to print it on his, so I have no reason to print it on my printer because it's going on his printer eventually. May as well print it uh, where it's going to end up. And I'm looking at this now, and I kind of want these fillets to surround surround these little tabs. And I think if I'm very lucky, right feature, no. Every once in a while you'll get lucky and the fillet feature will give you one of these auto options here that picks just exactly the fillets you need and nothing else. And it's great when it works, but it's kind of few and far between if you're making complicated features like this. But broadly speaking, I think we're looking good on fillets on that. And I am going to come back up to the main fillet on this guy. And we're going to switch which body we're looking at here for a second. And add these in here too. And probably shrink the fillets down a little bit because they're kind of large. Shrink, bring it down to like 0.8. That looks pretty reasonable. Uh, whoops, still hiding a body here. <laughs> still hiding a body. Uh, okay. So let's take a look now. That looks pretty all right. We still got clearance everywhere. Yeah, you think back to all the times you had to go and pick hundreds of fillets all over your weirdly surfaced body, and you're like, oh man, how much time could I have saved? And the answer is, don't think about it. Doesn't save you any time to think about it now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I need a little more a little more trimming in here. So I need to come over to the lid chamfer A. By the way, the reason I do um, chamfer A fillet and chamfer A and B and that sort of thing is I tend to create lots of sequential fillet features because the fillet structures I end up with on these parts are frequently kind of complicated and it just saves me thinking about it down the line if I think okay I've got clearly I had a reason yes cable control I keep forgetting about it but it's it is on the list it, the part won't get printed before it's got cable control for sure um, lid fillet A gonna add some chamfering surfaces in here. I'm going to move. Oh, is it going to throw a fit if I do that? It might. I'm going to quick throw fillets on the edge here and that should make the lid chamfer play a lot nicer. Yeah, that looks much better. And this last fillet up here is going to be lid fillet B, and okay, that looks good. Now it is time for the uh, the cable control. So we're going to come up back before we created the lid, and this is going to be interference tab cut or interference tab sketch plane. It's all right, and then this is the interference tab cut. This is the lid main extrude, or main body copy. We'll, we'll just call this lid extrude because then it might get, otherwise it's a little confusing what with the main body up there. Um, uh, lid, interference tab, subtract. And then interface clearance. Okay, so cable control. 
what I'm thinking is looking at... Hang on, this is rolled back. Gotta roll it forward. Otherwise, the assemblies tend to complain. What I'm thinking is kind of a... Sort of a... Here's the thing. I'm just gonna do this. Oops. What I'm thinking is basically... Oops. Let's do this with a paintbrush instead. I kind of want sort of a big flat plate behind it. And then probably with some zip tie cutouts in it or zip tie holes. And then that will be sort of a nice stress relief thing to zip tie everything to. So you've got one, one place where all your cables go to. Um, if you think that looks good, I'll start with it. Um, but chances are this being sort of a, what if I did it this way? Maybe you've got something else different in your head. So let's go back to SolidWorks. Is that going to work nicely? I think so. Let's go model that. Back up before the fillets. Call these the interference tab features, interference and lid features. We're going to move all these guys into this folder. And I think I could probably <laughs> well, it, it's sort of hard to make nice um, nice cable control features, I guess. I think I have an idea for how I could do it a little less weird, but it becomes very interesting to model it in a way that um, preserves shape and functionality, and not like I'm going to be mo tweaking this model in the future, but... Um, small it. Guide clear down. So you're thinking kind of uh, I should clarify on the um, uh, kind of for space. Yeah, there, there's not a lot of space. I mean, on the CR-10S there's lots of space up front here where you can mount something, but on the Ender 3 it's a lot shorter. There's maybe 100 millimeters, so go for max weird. Okay. <laughs> To clarify, I was uh, Andre asked a question about uh, vertical mounting and why have it be like this. No real particular reason. I kind of like having it. It does produce a nice sort of packaging, um, but that's really the majority of the reason. I also have a cider that's been sitting in front of me for 20 minutes, so I'm going to crack that open now. I am drinking Chilling Excelsior. It is good stuff. It's got a giraffe and a space helmet on it. Um, I think what I want to do. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Let's let's be weird. Uh, this is gonna get real weird, actually. <laughs> Do a quick sort of control surface up here. This is going to be 30 millimeters seems reasonable. We're going to make it be 10 millimeters off from the side here. Exit sketch. Then we'll do a plane offset. Flip offset. Curve the other way from the sketch. You want it to come down on the front, you think? I can see that, actually. Yeah, okay. That would be better for a lot of reasons. So, we'll do that. And now, on this plane... Um, 10 millimeters up. This will be 5 millimeters thick. Say 15 millimeters wide. 
It's probably still a little wider than the cable, but it's small enough to zip tie to. Um, and then... 15 millimeters seems okay. Cables are forward. Okay, yeah. Hide that plane there. Where's this sketch? Oh, hang on. You should be down below the uh, interference lid features. So let's do... Hmm. <laughs> I kind of modeled myself into a corner here. Let's do a 3D sketch. And I'm going to have... So I haven't totally modeled myself into a corner yet. I want this to be, oh, say, maybe five millimeters. Those two equal. And then we're going to do a whole bunch of making everything tangent around here. Yeah, sick. Okay. Let's do a lofted boss. I want to go this profile to this profile via this curve. Yes, that one. And this one. Hang on. What are you doing? What are you doing, you naughty solid modeling software? <laughs> Next guide, <laughs> print handcuffs. I'm not printing handcuffs. That's a bit weird even for me. <laughs> okay, I don't know why it's not letting me. Uh... I need to adjust where I've got these edges going to. That looks right. Okay, now you can tell it guide curve one, guide guide curve two. Let's see what happens if I just cannot make two planar faces. What? What's it complaining about? Cannot make two planar end faces to cap the side sheet. Oh, hang on. I think it's just throwing a fit because uh, these surfaces are weird because it refuses to interpret them nicely. <laughs> to next sharp, to next edge. What happens if I just get rid of one of them? That's not great. Global. Center line parameters, no. Start end constraints. Normal profile. There we go. This should help. End constraint, normal profile. Uh, I do not know what it's doing. Um. <laughs> hey, getting there. <laughs> oh god. Why? Why are you doing this to me? Okay, I'm going to be a little more stringent here and uh, add the remainder of my of the lines I should have just added from the start. This way it's got a whole guaranteed closed profile. No room for shenanigans. Oops. I want that one to be a long Y. Why'd you not go a long Y? Say a long Y. Thank you. We'll make this all equal. Do a whole bunch of extra tangent fiddling. Uh 
that looks pretty reasonable. So now if I do a loft, profile to profile, and then say this line, this line, this line. I could even really do this with a boundary boss feature, but um, I didn't because I was too lazy. Why not just slide the line you drew? Um, I guess I could have done that, but oh, hang on. Why are you being weird? Global? Some of the sections or guide curves are invalid. How rude. What if I just get rid of one of them? Maybe I will end up doing this with a boundary boss feature. Yeah, 3D sketches are a good way to just throw a wrench into any, uh, open. Changes you could see, it's not allowed for this guide. How about to next edge? Nope. Okay, we're gonna do this the, the rude way. Boundary boss. Yeah. I want it to come away a little bit from the print bed because that keeps it from getting too close to the uh, important things, TM. I'm gonna have a super cool way to make that uh, make that stiff too later on in printable. Uh, let's, yeah, let's try a swept boss. Maybe it won't work. Sketch profile, this one. Uh, let's pick this curve. Okay. Guide curves. This one. I want selection manager, please. Okay, that guide curve. Oh, hang on. Why are you not letting me pick other guide curves? Intermediate profile number two could not be solved. That's kind of weird. Hmm. I have the sneaking suspicion that because I have decided to make these coincident constraints rather than um, ears. No, that's not it. Discard changes and exit. Hmm. Alright, I'm just going to have to remember how to do a boundary boss. Direction 1. Okay. Direction 2. I have had some luck with uh, this type in the past, doing boundary bosses. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, sick. Now we have our funky little, funky little doodad to come over here and drop our cables for us. That's awesome. I, I mean, I think that's really cool. You're welcome to think it's not cool, but I'm also just gonna disagree. <laughs> Um, so let's do, from the back side, add a quick rib feature on this plane. And it looks like these guys need to be the same length so that that doesn't get all out of control. So I'm going to exit sketch. <laughs> Tusks and big ears. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess if I was CAD modeling an elephant, that's something I could do. Uh, selected body. I want this body, and I want it to be five millimeters wide. And that direction. Does not intersect the part model. What do you mean doesn't intersect the part model? Yeah, it does. <sighs> Nuts. I think what it might be having an issue with is 
this guy right here. There's a vertex right there that I want to pick. But because the boundary sketch ate it, I'm still editing the sketch, right? Yeah. Hmm. It seems to think I'm not in the sketch anymore, which is really weird. <laughs> Tusks and big ears. If I was for some reason trying to CAD model an elephant, maybe. But at the same time, no. SolidWorks is just terrible for that sort of thing. So let's do a rib. Flip material side. Five mils. I want to make a rib on this body. Why, you know? Ugh. Okay. I'm going to do this the lazy way. <laughs> Elephi. Yeah, a, res a raspberry Elephi. It's just a raspberry with a really long nose. Who knows what the nose looks like? I don't. Do I'm going to do this the lazy way and just... Uh, surface or actually up to next merge result thin feature mid plane and it's got the direction wrong yeah that's kind of what I had in my head was this sort of rib coming up at the bottom here and then when you want to print this part it can be very nicely printed uh, in an orientation that doesn't make you hate yourself <laughs> though I am going to come back here and I'm going to add this line back. Is that, it's like a terrible sliver face in there, but oh well. I can take a quick look at the curvature too and see. There must be some huge curvature somewhere that's making it so I can't actually see curvature. That's weird. Hmm. Uh, but I think... So now, when I come up... Chamfers. I misspelled that. Chamfers. <laughs> Zip tie holes. Yes. Let's do that with... going uh, up, 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 uh. it's come from the front plane and it won't let me go there so I have to make an extra plane on this surface hide it or sketch from it and then hide it and then I'm going to do using this and some boxes. Let's make it like ten. How wide? How wide is a? I feel like five millimeters is wide enough. Make all these collinear so I have all my nice thing lines up nice. Okay. So now all the same. Um, oh, you know what? Those can't be wider than that, so this has to be 60 or something. 50? 40? Yeah, okay. I'm going to bring it 5 millimeters back from there. And this one will be 25 millimeters back. Yeah, okay. Watch this. This is going to be cool, I think. Bald cut. Everything all generated. And boink. There we go. There's your zip tie cutouts. Probably a little shallower than necessary. I can widen that up. Uh, let's do that with a... Make this like 12. Yeah, looks good. 
Mm, I think I want it a little, a little more interesting than that. Let's get rid of these horizontal constraints. I don't know why it seems to think that it can still be, oh, equal maybe. Equal length. Oh, it's because of this guy right here. That. And that guy right there. Okay, now I should be able to... All of these dimensions that I placed between these guys made it very tricky. <laughs> and I'm going to go from the bottom face, actually. So we'll do a... Say this one's 35 millimeters back. And this one's going to be 10 millimeters back. Now we do some silliness to make everything line up right. Get everything equal. And then say that these are 30 degrees. It's probably fine. Cut linear back there. Do some equaling. Oh, hang on, we ran out of music. Cut a donut. Oh, yeah, that's another way to do it. Why is this not giving me... Oh, because I haven't set the width of that yet. Okay. Now, we've got two all-around features that cut out our very nice... Uh, our very nice zip tie slots. And that should probably be... Where, where am I doing... That's all under the boundary, I think, so... Hang on. SolidWorks is not responding to inputs anymore. Please don't crash. There we go. Okay. Leave the rib meat, you think? Okay. Yeah, I can do that with... Um... Actually, I, sh I need to move these features back before the fillets. It didn't crash. We're good. There's panic in the chat. <laughs> Lace through the rib. Oh. You want me to do something like um, like this. 25. Or even 22. Like that, kind of. So can print without support. I think I got an idea for that. Hmm. Let's do it as two guys like this. And we'll do tangent. Make this all tangent. So it'll print nice. Glad to get confirmation that it's what you're expecting. <laughs> and then we'll... I think I can trim the edges here. Oh, got rid of my equal length. Do some quick trims, make everything. If I add this round in here, that should be um, enough. Hang on, why is it? Yeah, with the ribbon tech is definitely better. I had some sort of a pipe dream at the start of having it um, nicely trim it down, but it's probably not practical. So this is definitely better. Uh, that all looks good. Um... When it rotates through, it'll cut out a nice little shape. And then we can add, actually, let's see, a wire carrier, boundary boss, then wire carrier rib, 
wire carrier zip tie cutouts. This one is the plane for wire carrier end. This is wire carrier end plane, rather. And this is the zip tie cutout sketch plane. So now I can come take a look at how much of my building that's broken. It's actually not too bad. Add some chamfers. Why does it not want to work on those? Oh, I see. I just didn't have that edge selected. We're going to get all these nice edges. Looks pretty good. And then I think the main fillet A actually should should probably cover the underside of this guy as well, if at all possible. I did not expect that to work anywhere near as cleanly as it did. I just clicked where I wanted fillets, and I got fillets that worked. <laughs> I wish for fillets that work. Oh man. And then I think I have this sort of secondary microfillet feature that I've got for a couple of interior spots. And I could just tack that onto these interior cutouts to make sure that nothing untoward happens with stress it or stress risers in there. But that looks exceptionally good. And the washer clearance should probably still work just fine. Yep, still doing cutouts in there. Um I don't know about you, but uh, to me, that looks good enough to print. Great big fillets. <laughs> so we'll uh, bundle this stuff up all nice and uh, nice and clean. Uh, wire guide features. Take a quick look at this guy. Actually, we'll do that with the... This, this pop-out, I didn't know about this for probably a year or two after I started using SolidWorks. Handiest thing in the world for manipulating visualization and models. Just fantastic. Um, but these features all look good, I think. Um, should print pretty nicely. This stuff won't be great, and it will need fillets, but that rib is going to be nice and strong, and I'm not worried about it at all. So, I don't think there's really anything else to add to this. Um, hmm. The only other thing for me to do really is send it off to my dad's machine to print. And since I have to remember how to, uh, one more wire tie near top, you think? Uh, possibly, but that's going to be really tricky. <laughs> I thought about doing it, but it's it's just going to be not pleasant to model, so I don't really want to. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think um, when you go and look at look at it in context with the pie in place, these two are going to have plenty constraining them over here, and they'll have they'll be protected, but not over constrained, and the shape of this structure is going to have plenty of strength to hold everything together and make it not. Um, sort of weird and floppy. So... Hmm. I think that's good to go. I am going to save all of this. Go take a look at it one more time in context. And... Oh, I'm missing a fillet. On the inside of the lid, I 
this edge in here needs a fillet. Because otherwise that runs the risk of breaking out. Oh, the reason everything was cyan for a second there, I'll just show it again. Um, I'm editing the feature inside of this subpart in the assembly. And so you can do in context editing and, and tie things together and do weird witchcraft. Uh, generally not a good idea, sometimes useful, but again, generally not a good idea. But in this case, very handy because it let me just add the fillet right where I wanted it. Sometimes it's easier than opening up a really big part file if, if you've already got it open the, in the assembly. Um, but that all looks good to go. Um, except it isn't because it's going to interfere right there. <laughs> Connect the tip of the table gu cable guide with the case. You want just kind of like a little, um, take a quick screen grab of it. Um, expand canvas. You want kind of a polygon, something kind of like this. Coming to the bottom of the case. I guess that could work. I, it kind of depends on that making sure that there's enough sort of stuff there. But with that rib, I think it's honestly going to be stiff enough, stiff enough that I really don't need to worry about it. So, I mean, maybe someday when I can actually release all this stuff because SolidWorks won't come after me when I do, um, it would be more than welcome to... Uh... Actually, yeah, I, I could see... Hang on, yeah, hang on. Uh, let's go back to the enclosure, up to the wire guide. Yeah, that's probably a good call. Quick extruded boss on the back here. Make it say 20 millimeters. Yes, it was 22.5 was the midpoint there. Yeah, you're right. It's good to have that, that little extra bit of guarantee there. Make that five mils thick. Enable. Oh, hang on. <laughs> it's going the wrong direction. There we go. Now it's really real. We'll call that the uh, reinforcement bridge, I guess. Get rid of that uh, visualization management. Come see what that breaks in the fillets. Oh, only one one chamber really that broke. Though I do want fillets in here. There and there. And I'm going to tweak the chamfers to not follow the whole edge. I'm just going to have them do like that. And then we have a little solid bridge doohickey there. I am going to add a fillet in there too. <laughs> the Comanero's Bridge. I'm going to name it that, actually. Because it does it does get narrower right there. You've got sort of this... Whoops. You've got sort of this wide area up here, and then you got the Narrows. So you have the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. <laughs> um, yes. Very Yes. So I can't think of anything else that I really want to add to this. If you guys have anything specific to suggest, I am open to it. Um, but I think this model is probably good enough to send it. Uh, got good clamps for the wires, got things. <laughs> Pretty much every feature you could want. Oh, I remember. I was going to go back and... Not mounting tab, but the mounting boss pattern on the control sketch. I have this centered in the open space, but it's no longer an open space. So I have to come back here to the sketch and say, be coincident with the origin instead. 
and that will uh, that will center the pie inside of the enclosure and throw off my location for that boss. So now I have to tweak that. <laughs> um, boundary boss, 3D sketch. Or no, it's this first sketch up here. That would have been over two and a half, so let's call it 7.5. And that will make that just a hair larger. Everything else will adapt. Nothing's broken. Then we come back here in context. The center line of these two kind of lines up in the middle of that, which is just exactly what I want. What's this outer radius to? Two inches? The inner radius is one inch? That I totally save for minimum bend radius on, on cables this size, so I'm not worried about that either. Um, yeah. I don't really think there's anything else that needs adding. Uh, we've got enough space to run DuPont wires. They'll be a little bit tight, but that's fine. Um... Yeah, I can't think of anything else. All of my dedicated four concurrent viewers. Uh, or what is it? Four, two, or three? No, I wow, I had as many as five people watching at one point. That's kind of kind of crazy. Um, loyal viewers, do you have any suggestions for things I could add to this that aren't horrible and awful to implement? Hmm. <laughs> I really can't think of anything else. Yeah, I'm just gonna... So, I'm gonna end the stream here. I just cut it because it doesn't need to run for any longer. Um... And probably save out these STLs. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for watching. Um, scientific progress goes boink. I'm going to keep doing this. If you have something um, in particular that you'd like me to model, I think I have my email up. Um, oh, yeah, I'll go take a peek at the final assembly. Um, in context, so this isn't the printer it's going to go on, but I mean, this is broadly similar to any... Creality printer. Uh, still thinks the enclosure is transparent. Whoops. Yeah, I gotta pick the freaking body in here. Here we go. Change transparency. Um, it would fit like this on pretty much any Creality printer with the, um, the double wide side legs, uh, which is great because they all use that T slot style. So anyone, anyone could really use this. I'm not gonna release it, I think, because I don't have a license to do that yet. I'm buying the license tomorrow, so. Even then I have to remodel it, but I'll just, I'll keep designing things like this. If, uh, if you find it interesting, keep watching, keep telling me to model more weird stuff. I'll make sure that my, uh, my email address is on my YouTube account, so if you have an inquiry or something, feel more, feel free to, uh, to email me with uh, a sketch of something that you want done, and maybe I'll stream modeling it up and post it on Thingiverse later. But I can't do this with I can't do that with this license just yet. That's gonna have to wait. Um yeah. Thanks for watching. Have a nice night. Boink. <laughs>